Dear Harstem, let's start with one thing. I definitely suck. I make many mistakes in this game, from an unrefined opener, missing several SCVs, and not paying attention when I should have been. However, my opponent makes many mistakes too. Throwing away units, being totally out of position, and having no map vision whatsoever. However, these mistakes do not matter, for my opponent is playing the Protoss race. Battery overcharge basically makes Protoss unkillable in the early game, no matter how large the army difference is. Disruptors are such a punishing unit, not paying attention for a second can lead to losing 30 plus supply. What is the worst thing that can happen if the Protoss sitting in their base isn't paying attention for a second or two? They have to pop battery overcharge. Terran instantly loses the game. To summarize, I feel that Protoss can get away with making so many more mistakes than Terran, and that my opponent this game did little to deserve this win. So tell me, Captain, is it Imba, or do I suck? Name, disrespect, race Terran in the Grandmaster League on North America. Well, first of all, disrespect, congratulations on your Grandmaster rank, especially given your well, rather visible limitations as a person, because you talk about the frequency of mistakes as being one of the most important things in your imbalance complaint form. You say Protoss players make way more mistakes than Terran, and yet they can get away with it. But you don't actually talk about how big the mistake is. This is as if you're, you go out every single day to the Starbucks to buy a $5 coffee. Now, over 100 days, this adds up to $500, which is a lot of money. And you could say, in a way, this is poor, uh, you know, poor, poor spending, really. I mean, you can make coffee cheaper at home. Uh, you could say that's a bad decision. And that, in 100 days, is 100 bad decisions. So many mistakes. And at the same time, disrespect, what if the neighbor of this person buys an ice sculpture of his dog every two months that costs 900 euros? Well, it's going to be more expensive, let me tell you that much. I was trying to do the math internally, how many days is in a month, and I couldn't get to it. But 900 is more than 500. So even if you're only going to get a single ice sculpture in 100 days, you still spend 400 euros more, which arguably is, well money less well spent. I don't think dogs are very much into sculptures of themselves or ice sculptures of themselves. But then again, I am no dog expert, so I wouldn't be capable of figuring that out. What I am an expert on, though, is the Terran versus Protoss matchup. Having played loads of Terran versus Protosses from both sides uh, as a Terran as well as as a Protoss, I feel like I have a pretty decent understanding of this. And I'm looking forward to all of this. You mentioned an unrefined build order, and I'm curious to see what this unrefined build order entails. Uh, actually, I'm quite curious, because the build orders for Terran in the TVP matchup are pretty straightforward most of the time. Uh, you either go into some type of 1-1-1 or you're playing some type of 3-1-1 uh, with a fast 3 racks before the factory. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking forward to what this is going to be. Could also be a triple CC, obviously. Okay, now it's going to be a factory. I think this is a very good standard opener. Marine first into a quick reactor gives you a lot of safety. Safety? Safety? It, <laughs> it allows you the possibility to skip a bunker in the natural for a little while because a single adept isn't going to be capable of killing you and neither is a single stalker majority of the time. So you don't usually have to build a bunker and you can focus that money somewhere else like, for example, adding more barracks. Okay, this is interesting. Now, this isn't necessarily bad. Uh, a, a, a barracks factory into a second barracks and this is a build that... We actually saw happen a lot in Intellect Stream Masters Katowice, especially from double gas openers. Um, because with double gas openers, often Protoss responds with a Stargate. Then you can rush out a quick Cyclone and then go into three racks. And three racks with a Cyclone against Stargate openers are really quite strong and have a lot of aggressive potential. They scare the Protoss player. They keep the Terran safe in the early. So I like that. I'm not as huge a fan of it with a single gas uh, single refinery or sorry, a single refinery fast command center type of build um but yeah no i actually I, i'm just not a huge fan of that I'm, I'm i'm gonna be real with you because the cyclone it is so late that it really can't be used aggressively as a tool for map control um yeah i'm i don't know i'm just not a, re a real big fan of it. unless you're going into some type of three racks tank all in which is also a viable strategy just pump out a lot of marines one cyclone and then two tanks pull eight nine workers across the map which is a it's a build order that gets played you're gonna be completely what is this you have a bunker okay you don't have to chase the stalkers if you have a bunker you can hide behind the bunker 
This makes absolutely... This is like buying a shield and then standing in front of it. Like, hit me with the shield behind your back. It's like, unless you're being backstabbed, it's not that useful. It's the case here as well. Fast third base coming out of the Protoss player, who's playing a Blink into Robo build order. Uh, with two gates as well. Kind of old school. Mind Drop would have done really well against this build. I'm going to have to just add that in here. I'm kind of sad that we're seeing this. I, I'm just not a huge fan of this. So we're getting... Okay, it's just like a 3-rex follow-up. This is... Yeah. I, I don't really like this build too much, but it, it is playable. And I've seen it I've seen it played before as well. No eBay being added though. And no third gas either. Um, yeah. That is interesting. No SCVs building. So the reason why I'm saying no third gas here is because the second gas was quite late. We're rushing into a starport. We don't have cash yet for a plus one. And the moment this reactor finishes, we're not going to have cash for medevacs either. Because we're already investing in marauders at this point, which cost gas. So you're rushing out a starport with a reactor to build half a medevac. Or you have to cut in your unit production. Like you are, no, you're not cutting in your unit production, thus it's going to be a single medevac. This is... And it doesn't have plus one. This is not an unrefined build. This is not a build. What does unrefined mean? Oh, look. The definition of unrefined is not processed to remove impurities or unwanted elements. Now, this entire build is an unwanted element because nothing in here so far is good. Uh, you have your Marauders too fast so that you can't produce medevacs. You don't have a quick plus one. You're going to hit a late timing despite not doing any pressure whatsoever. Like, the reason why this build is kind of good is because you can hit pretty tight timings. You're not investing into a fast medevac. You're not investing into uh, extra mines or extra tanks from the factory. There's very minimal investment from all of those things. You get a pretty quick starport and you have three barracks pumping out Marauders and Marines really early on. But you're not using any of that. You don't have an eBay to actually boost your bio units. So, no, I don't actually think this is ever a thing. Is starting your eBay at the six minute mark. This is just an all in, but it's an all in that hits late and with less stuff than a regular macro build does. Okay, it doesn't. Uh... Yeah, no, it, it's, not, it's not a good build. This is just really not a good build. Luckily for you, though, our good friend Honda Civic has also opened up with. An interesting one. He only has a single Colossus out for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure what happened here. I wasn't paying too much attention to, to our good friend the Civic. It feels like you have enough units. The, the, the problem here for pros is that you need to defend in between this area, right? So we, we look at this. You kind of want to defend here. If you're defending in your third base, Terran walks into your natural. If you're defending in your natural, Terran walks into the third. There's really no good way about it. On top of that, we see like five, six Marauders. Only a single Colossus without range. Yeah, without range. No upgrades, no nothing. So if Marauders do majority of the tanking, which should be possible because, well, Colossus only has six range here, then life pretty much sucks. Some interesting target fire here. This is not Grandmaster Micro. This is not Grandmaster Micro. What? What was the Micro in decision making here? Ah, sorry. One second. I'm, I'm gonna check to make sure this guy's actually GM. How do you figure that out? Alright, I checked it and apparently Disrespect is at least at Grandmaster MMR, but currently not in GM. But I just wanna go over this one again. Okay, this is... The, the, the decision making and the control here makes so little sense to me. Like... Like... I, 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 don't, I just don't quite understand. Okay, so here we see... Okay, let's just, just take a look at the vision here. What do we have? So we have... Six Marauders in this army, one Medevac, a bunch of Marines. You take out this pylon, which is good. So you have free access into the natural of your opponent right now. Then on top of that, you see your opponent is moving into this general area to try and defend their natural, which is probably an okay, okay decision. So Disrespect sees this and starts jumping on it. But rather than just taking out the army and using the Marauders to tank, what we're seeing here is a move command practically onto the Colossus, which then moves back. But it doesn't just... That isn't just all there is. He just stands in the Colossus fire and continues going and tries again. After already doing the same trick before, losing half of his army, he goes for it again. This is like... If, you, if, you're, if you're stuck in a hallway and you have two doors and there's like a keyhole and you peep through the keyhole, 
Through the one door you see uh, like a, a monster with seven heads chewing on some human remains. And in the other keyhole you see a turtle that is trying to get to his carrot. Like, you decide to go for the seven-headed monster. My friend, if you were a main character in Harry Potter, you wouldn't have made it alive through the first hundred pages of the Philosopher's Stone. Like, this is some hot garbage tier decision making over here this entire natural was open you could have killed every single worker there was no battery to be used here anymore so you could have taken a good good fight as well in your opponent's natural on top of that or you could have cleared every worker here just continued stimming don't forget your opponent didn't even have thermal lands yet so chasing with a six range colossus trying to kill six marauders and 25 marines it's going to take a while and it also exposes you immediately there's like five stalkers with this and two slow zealots this was legitimately the worst defensive army you should have won this game five times over like, Hero Marine wins fight like this when there's three Colossi out. Well, that's not entirely true, but when there's two Colossi out and, like, five, six more units. Like, this was a win. Like, your build order was terrible, and yes, it was an all-in, but you should have won with it. You actually should have, and now you're actually in a crap spot. Your opponent has 68 workers, has two Colossus out. The only thing your opponent is lacking is map vision. There's no map vision whatsoever. So it's going to take a little bit of damage here, most likely, at least against these Marines. Love the focus here on the pylon. Just uh, denying that. And don't think that's too bad. Uh, we have a drop here on the bottom side. This is good. Pretty decent movement. I like this a lot. You kind of realize your opponent has no vision whatsoever on the map. And you just go in. Deal enough damage. Okay, well. Problem solved again. Kill like, what, 24 workers or so. Um, have you scouted the fact that there's a fourth base yet? Not really. Your third base also is really... I feel like your build has nothing. How is that even possible? I mean, you did spend your money somewhat okay. Why, how is it that you have late everything and quick nothing? It is really wonderful to have this. I heard that companies hire disrespect to make things less efficient. It's like, you know, how you have, like, efficiency consultants. This is an inefficiency consultant. You know, if a process is going too streamlined, you can hire him to go into a different company, like a competitor's company. Disrespect will go in there, and he'll absolutely destroy any processes that they had that they were very efficient. He's an absolute king at that. How is it possible that your third base lands at the 9 minute mark? And you don't even have plus 1 yet. I just don't see how it is. I'm, I also don't quite understand. Okay, TVP is a little bit like a massage in a way. Okay? Um, and what I mean with that is that you need to apply constant pressure all the time. Like a, a medium level of pressure. You can't just stab the guy you're massaging. And then do nothing for 5 minutes. Take the knife out and stab him again. It feels like that's what you're currently doing. You just had a, a pretty big engagement over here. Or like a pretty, pretty decent uh, situation over here. <laughs> Did he get rallied accidentally across the map? No. What? What is the adventure of Danny the Disruptor? This is the sickest move I've seen in my life. What is this? Holy crap. That is legitimately one of the worst moves that I've seen in the entirety of human history. And it worked out. Um, I can't even recall. I feel like I was flaming you about something else before. Ah, right. The fact that you're not applying any pressure whatsoever. I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. You're not applying any pressure whatsoever after dealing so much damage. You have momentum on your side. You had a crap ton of Metavax. And rather than actually working with that advantage where, you know, you depower some buildings, stop the, the upgrade from going and continue dropping, keeping map control, you're allowing your opponent to probe up back to 77 after he only had 50 workers. There's like 27 workers they're allowed to build. Um, they're on four bases, continued upgrade, storm. Everything is allowed. Look at that. The, the difference earlier was like 90 supply against... I don't even know what it was, like 90 supply against uh, 140, 130. Now it's 127 against, well, it should have been 160. This move I want to talk about as well. Holy crap, what is this? Okay, so now you might be thinking, this is a great piece of harassment. And another reason why Protoss is so extremely broken, right? Because that is pretty much what you said. You said, this is, oh, this is what it was about. What was it that you said? Let me figure that out real fast. Disruptors are such a punishing unit. 
Not paying attention for a second can lead to losing 30 plus supply. What's the worst thing that can happen if a Protoss sitting in their base isn't paying attention for a second or two? Well, first of all, it isn't not paying attention for two seconds. This is not having any map vision whatsoever. The, the furthest vision that you have are these two Widow Mines, which I have no clue why they're here. Why wouldn't you just put a Widow Mine in this location? So the moment something moves out, you see it, and your Widow Mine actually shoots at it. Why aren't your Medivacs on the map? Why don't you have any vision out on the map? The reason why moves like this are not played at high level is not because all high-level Protoss players are complete idiots. The reason why it isn't played on high levels is because if you are running across the map with a lone disruptor, and the Terran is on the map as well, the disruptor dies, and the disruptor isn't there anymore. This is an extremely risky move that against a Terran that has any type, any, any resemblance of map vision, it would not work, and the disruptor would die for free, which is, quite frankly pretty garbage and on top of that you say what's the worst thing that can happen if a protoss sitting in their base isn't paying attention for a second or two well what's the worst thing that can happen if a protoss doesn't pay attention for a second or two yes terran doesn't have a unit like the disruptor and that is pretty normal because starcraft 2 is a game that isn't symmetrically balanced it, it isn't that everyone has just soldiers and they shoot each other that would be terrible no we have different strengths and different weaknesses terran for example doesn't really need to worry about anything in the early game except maybe an oracle flying in and buzzing down three workers before it runs out of energy no uh, terran can basically block their minimap and not look at the minimap for the first seven minutes of the game protos however blinks for uh, half a second too long you lost two mineral lines because widow mines burrow in there at lightning speed which you mean what's the worst thing that can happen in two seconds L literally every single game that gets played we see a freaking widow mine fly and kill 14 workers at every single level like two seconds is a is a crap ton of time this isn't just two seconds either this is like 30 seconds of this disruptor moving across the map and you being completely unaware because you have no map vision whatsoever if a toss is over here with his army and you manage to get your entire army into their main base because the toss has no spotting either the toss is dead as well you can say well you can recall yes enjoy recalling into 150 supply army terran that's going to go real well for the protoss player quick tip that's sarcasm it isn't going to go real well the disruptor move was was hot garbage and it should have never worked it worked this time but this is an absolute freak scenario um which also kind of is on you due to not having any map vision whatsoever or any any map control at all so now you're moving out you waited for your ghost you waited for five vikings um, you have an entire control group for all of this I, I find it impressive i'm not going to say anything about this but a lot of terrans actually control their army with just a single control group and i honestly find that more impressive than bad like clem also does it so i can't say hey change it um because clem has really sick control so if you're good with this then then i guess you're just good with this now there are a couple of vikings still still over here at the third base i would like for these to be added on just kind of ready on also shows that he's not f2ing actually look at that actual army control beautiful stuff okay that wasn't the hottest fight here i'm quite sure if i'd still want to try and attack into this you see the super battery going as well? Surely this is not going to go very well. Okay. Look, I understand that the super battery is annoying, right? It, it sucks. It's annoying to play against, but it is fairly visible. You know it's happening. It happened before over here as well, when the Colossus was there with the initial fight. Perhaps you shouldn't make the same mistake twice you know if you go to a swimming pool and you dive in and the swimming pool is empty because there's no water in it you're not gonna take the stairs outside of the swimming pool go to the diving board and try a second time no you figured it out after the first time or you're in the hospital one of the two or maybe a combination of the two um Here's the same thing. You start with a pretty big purification nova on your army, and then you make the bad decision to continue fighting despite knowing that there's going to be a super battery there, and then you continue to engage into the super battery rather than pulling back the moment you see it activated. This doesn't really show that, that Protoss is overpowered defensively. It shows that you just have really bad decision making and don't understand when you need to do certain things. Like you, you're, you can't read the cues, and the cues were there, my friend. They really were. Just need to read into them a little bit better. Okay, you end up taking out some disruptors. This fight is, this game is uber over. Protoss player just continues expanding really fast as well. You finally have your fourth base. Protoss already has his fifth setup. Continued upgrades. I'm still honestly stunned by the fact that you managed to get to 5200 MMR on North America without getting your, your upgrades before the 12 minute mark going. 
getting to two not getting to two started before the 12 minute mark is honestly impressive and this is not like this was a low eco game no, this was just a standard game protoss actually has dealt two worker kills that's it two worker kills total and i bet one of them was like a scouting worker or something like that this has just been it's actually been unbelievable so far this has just been a really weird game this i like this is a good move see Imagine these, one of these was here earlier. It would have spotted the disruptor. You got a disruptor kill for free. That's fantastic. That's what you need to do. That's what everyone does. This is not a new concept that I just made up. Everyone knew that you have a salad run by into this base. Pearl's player thinks this is going to work. I have a quick tip there. This is not going to work. Absolutely not. Pearl's just continues expanding as well. Look at this guy, man. An actual macro monster. I mean, at this point, I think our Terran player is pretty dead. He's down 12 workers. Um, he's down two upgrades. And he also has a significantly worse army. He's still, after, well, six minutes, no, seven minutes, what is it? Yeah, seven minutes of seeing Colossus, has not managed to muster up a Viking force capable of taking out the initial three Colossus, um, which is, once again, just very, very impressive. Just a lot of the things that are happening here, I'm more impressed by than disappointed, in a way. It's like, I don't even quite understand how it's possible that you see someone open up with Colossus and you decide that, you know what, Vikings might just be more of a luxury in this case. I'll focus more on building mines. Because you do keep building mines, don't you? Despite there being 12 disruptors out already. And disruptors being a very solid counter to mines. You've lost 13 mines. So you built 6 more. Now, your planetary gets taken out by Dark Templar. Uh, you give up on life and start attacking across the map. Good move. I always like that. Terran hasn't been capable of uh, fighting the army on their own side of the map for the past 3 minutes. Then when they lose the base, they go like, Alright, now I can. It's like, no, you still have better chances winning just setting up that fourth base again. Yeah, this is actually the correct call, going back home here. I, 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 I do like that. I appreciate that a lot. It's a good call. Very good call. I also like the mine here. I think a mine next to a planetary, when you know DTs are out, is almost always going to be a necessity. Now, you can lift this. You do lift that, which is the correct play. Thank the Lord. Um, I mean, there's just a gold base. You haven't put on any pressure on this Protoss since ever, honestly. Like, no aggressive rotations, no drops except for the early game. It has just been bad, bad, bad. And I don't have a feeling it's going to get good anytime soon. I mean, Protoss has freaking infinite resources at this point. 94 workers. Yes, 3-3 three, three on the way. Yeah, 3-3 three, three on the way. You also have 2-2, two, two, but you lose your third base. And at this point, you're just behind. And this actually... Now, here... Here, I would understand it. If you had a maxed army at this point, and you were fighting against 8 disruptors or 9 disruptors... And all the Toss does is dance back and forth and show shoot purification novels at you. And you were to complain about that, I'd say, yeah, I think that is a valid complaint. At the high level, at the highest level, disruptors are super annoying to play against. It feels like they have no direct counter on the ground. The only kind of indirect counter is in the air, which is the Liberator. You need very good control as the Terran player, while shooting the purification of us takes very... Um, very little to do. Like, you can just shoot a purification of it, you can put it even on follow-on units. Like... That isn't exactly rocket science, you know? I completely would have agreed with you. But instead, what you picked was one moment where James Bond in Disruptor form moves across the map, shoots his one Disruptor shot, and kills 30 supply. This is as if you are you have a plumbing problem in your neighborhood, right? There, there's Everything is bad. The, 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 the toilet doesn't flush, all that crap. And the neighborhood wants to talk to the, the, the local government who is... You know, responsible for this terrible plum job. You know, the, the pipes, whatever, something is wrong. And you become the spokesperson for all of these people, your entire neighborhood, okay? There's a lot riding on this because these people want to pee again and flush it. And when the first thing you mention in the meeting is that you can't drink out of the toilet bowl anymore because the water is contaminated. Like, this is politically very ineffective. And it's the same thing that you're doing here. This single disruptor moving across the map, killing 30 supply... It's not the problem for Terrans against Disruptors. And every Terran is going to hate you for bringing this up. What they dislike is the fact that nine Disruptors at the same time can just shoot. Protoss doesn't have to do any defensive micro. There's no energy cost on that either. Like, I'm doing the complaint better than you did it. I don't even understand how that is possible. As long as there are people like you complaining about not being capable of drinking water out of a toilet bowl, I think Protoss is going to be safe. So not only do I think that you suck, because that I do know for sure. I also would like to thank you from the, the, the Secret Protoss Alliance. Thank you for keeping up the good fight. With Terrans like you, we're never gonna get nerfed.
Thanks so much for watching today's episode of Is It Imba or Do I Suck? If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Uh, new videos every day. Bye-bye.